Redmi vs Realme, that smartphone battle is back again. So this time I'm going to be pitting the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus' 200 megapixel camera against the 108 MP1 inside the Realme 10 Pro Plus. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. you're watching Track and Take English, let the camera battle begin. So the 200 megapixel sensor inside the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus is the new Samsung HPX sensor. Now starting off with the daylight shots in the Note 12 Pro Plus sample, you can see sharp textures that look very good when pixel peeped, especially around the center, around the leaves. Realme's 108 megapixel sensor is softer in comparison, which is visible even when you look right around the pool area. However, colors are closer to natural looking on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. You can see that the red of the box is slightly orangey in the Note sample, and the greens and blues are also slightly heightened. While the colors are not as good, Redmi's HDR performance seems to have improved quite a bit. In this sample, you can see far better controlled highlights out here. Moreover, when you look at the darker shadow portions around the sofa, Redmi's algorithm has none of that ugly green luminance noise that is visible in Realme's sample. This clearly indicates that the multi-stack processing happening with the primary camera samples is superior on the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus compared to the Realme 10 Pro Plus. So when I shot friends and family with both these phones, it was quite neck to neck if you ask me and no pun intended there. Now Redmi offered crisper details in general but the exposure control on the face was better on Realme. Skin tones were not neutral on both but Redmi managed to control the red slightly better than Realme did in this picture of Sajid. In the next picture of Sagar, Redmi sample had a weird blown highlight issue around the jacket shoulder. But otherwise, it's pretty good. By the way, since Redmi has a larger sensor and wider aperture, you get a nicer bokeh drop off. Now, if you look at the HDR samples of Sagar against the light, I don't even have to say it, Realme's algorithm completely botches up the highlights and oversaturates the colors too. Redmi's image is technically better. So overall, if I have to trust one of these phones for shooting friends and family when I'm out and about with them, I would probably pick the Redmi. If you like the kind of videos that we make, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we have a camera comparison or any smartphone comparison slash review waiting for you. Moving on to portrait mode shots, in these samples of Sajid, both the phones have done a stellar job of the edge cutout. The natural drop off is good too. But if you notice closely, you will see how Redmi does the drop off gradually when you look around the wall area. The drop off that the algorithm tries to simulate is very similar to that of a DSLR. But what happens here is that the wall is actually at the same level as Sajid is. And therefore it looks kinda odd because there's no depth per se. Moving on to the next portrait shot, both have done a bad job out here with the edge cutout because it's frankly a very tough scenario to cut out. Which portrait shots did you prefer? Let me know in the comment section below. In low light shots, both the phones offer the same amount of exposure, which is good, and the detailed retention is similar to for the most part. Sometimes, you know, Redmi is sharp in certain areas, Realme is sharp in other areas. But what Redmi offers is far less grain in the shadow portion of the image. Now look at the wall in the first image and when you move to the second image, look at the sky and you will spot far less noise in Redmi shot and more noise in Realme shot. So technically, Redmi is better at low light photography. Remember how I had mentioned that Realme's you know, 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera quality is not that great in my previous camera comparison of the 10 Pro Plus? If you haven't watched that yet, definitely go check that out. Now let's see if Redmi's 8 megapixel ultra wide can actually beat it. In daylight shots, what I noticed is that it has more details on offer and far less noise in the shadow region as well. However, it doesn't do HDR as well as the primary camera does and it blows out the highlights terribly. I tried it with a couple of shots and this has been the result always. Furthermore, the color sense consistency with the primary camera is completely off, which is fairly well balanced on the Realme 10 Pro Plus to my complete surprise. Even low light performance is not as clean as Realme's. So surprisingly, while I don't think that the Realme 10 Pro Plus' ultra-wide angle camera is better as the preceding Realme 9 Pro Plus, it still beats the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus and that's primarily because of better multi-stack processing in HDR and low-light processing and that's where Realme takes the lead, especially for the ultra-wide, which is something odd on the Redmi because it does better multi-stack processing with the primary camera. However, Redmi pulls back a win with the 2 megapixel macros. Now that I'm a fan of 2 megapixel macros anyway, for what it is worth, you can basically go closer to the subject and take crisper shots. Now coming to selfies, Realme's selfies are more natural looking compared to the reddened, over-sharpened ones from Redmi. 
I like the added contrast in Redmi's selfies though, especially what you see here in this second selfie sample. Even in HDR selfies and low light selfies, I'd pick Realme over Redmi for being more technically efficient. Overall, if you like shooting with the selfie cameras a lot, I'd pick Realme over Redmi. Coming down to video recording, Redmi has OS, which definitely comes in handy while shooting 4K 30 FPS videos. The dynamic range correction and colors are better too. Moreover, the sound recording is cleaner. It is better than the Realme 10 Pro Plus for sure. This is a 4K 30 FPS video recording using the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus and the Realme 10 Pro Plus. This is a 4K 30 FPS video recording using the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus and the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Now while shooting 1080p 60fps videos, you get super stabilized mode on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. And you can tell clearly that the stabilization is better when you're shooting 1080p 60fps videos using Realme compared to Redmi. Although you can get stabilized 1080p 30fps videos on both, and again Redmi offers better dynamic range and doesn't even have the kind of focus hunting that you see in Realme's footage. Now when you're shooting ultra wide angle videos, just like photos, it is better on Realme just because it's detailed and sharper. Stabilization and HDR are similar on both and sound is better on Redmi in my opinion. Now when it comes to selfie video recording, I like the facial tones on Realme but you can see some jelly effect in EIS which is not there on Redmi and sound quality is good on both. So now I'm recording using the front camera on both these phones at 1080p 30fps. So now I'm recording using the front camera on both these phones at 1080p 30fps. Now most of you will be shooting with the primary camera for videos and that's where you know Redmi takes the lead but if you want to shoot a lot with the selfie cameras, I would side with Realme on this one. Now both these phones are also feature rich in terms of camera you know, options that you get. For example, on Realme, uh, you have something called the street mode and on Redmi, you have something called the vlog mode, all of which are really cool and fun to use. But we are testing on technicality basis and that's where I want to sum up the findings for you right now. So firstly, the primary camera, the 200 megapixel camera on the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus is definitely better than the 108 megapixel camera on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. But the pictures from the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle cameras and selfies are definitely better on Realme. If you like shooting macros, then you know you have to pick the Redmi. And for video recording, I think Redmi takes the lead once again, primarily because primary camera video recording, which is most important for most people, is definitely better on the Note 12 Pro Plus. Now, as far as I can tell, most people will end up using the primary camera for shooting pictures and of course uh, for shooting videos as well. And that is where Redmi has directed all of its attention. Now, if you want to shoot selfies, then I would say that Realme is the better bet. But both these cameras, I think, are good enough, will serve the purpose for most users. So that's it from me. I'll take your leave right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until the next one, keep tracking and stay safe.